folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. That's right. We're getting ready for the holiday weekend because tomorrow is Christmas Eve and Sunday is Christmas Day. So we gather around with our friends, family, relatives, and more on this miraculous holiday cheer. Yes, you decorate your Christmas trees with all the ornaments turtle doves, and you have your Santa Claus and other kinds that you want to put up there, and of course the Christmas star or Christmas angel. You know, you also use the Christmas lights. You can even decorate it on your roof if you live in a, uh, a very suburban town or, or any other wonderful house that you have, for sure. But if you're in an apartment, you'll probably just end up putting a Christmas wreath or any other you can also put a Christmas wreath in the house too. <laughs> Any other. Yeah, put some reindeers and all that stuff on the porch. And add Santa Claus and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And of course, have a a delicious uh, Christmas dinner with the turkey and all the other condiments that he got. You know, like potato salad, rice. Uh, pudding of any kind. Yeah, it could be uh, banana pudding, chocolate pudding, any other. Uh, also mashed potatoes <laughs> with gravy. And also to go along with a drink. Yeah, you can even have a turkey sandwich too. And also for desserts, uh, pumpkin pie pecan pie or any other holiday pies even cheesecake <laughs> and yes Christmas cookies too yeah get her around with the carolers singing all these Christmas songs or you can listen to Christmas music or even watch Christmas movies and specials at home you know just go out for Christmas shopping for sure to to gather all those gifts that you're going to send to your friends, family, and relatives that you love. Maybe someone at work or at school or any other. You know, write some letters just so we can have this wonderful you know, festive of holiday ever. And you can join in with other holidays like Hanukkah because they have eight crazy nights or perhaps wonderful nights for sure. Or, there's Kwanzaa, which is the perfect cheerful miracle for them, and Boxing Day, which is just like uh, Christmas here. Well, but it's different. But not to mention any other uh, around the world. And who could have forget... Festivus, uh, the holiday that was created by Ray Costanza, George's father on Seinfeld. <laughs> so you can trade some insults to each other <laughs> and get around the tradition. Yeah. Well, I'm going to end it with a movie review, and I think I'm going to keep it that way. For this uh, joyful, marvelous 1970 music film adaptation of Charles Dickens' um, excellent um, story of a Christmas Carol. Yes, I know there's been so many versions out there. And I know I just recently reviewed Spirited. <laughs> It came out on Apple TV Plus, but I always did love all the other versions too, like uh, Muppets Christmas Carol and Mickey's Christmas Carol and and so on. But this one is indeed the best, and I definitely topped this up for sure. It's simply called Scrooge. What the dickens have they done with Scrooge? <laughs> As it was referred to in, in the movie poster. 
when Albert Finney, legendary actor, portrayed as the surly moneylender Ebenezer Scrooge, where he's going to be visited by free spirits by that's led by his partner, Jacob Marley, who's played by Sir Alex Guinness. Yeah. And it had 11 uh, musical arrangements, um, all which have been composed by Leslie Bucuzzi, which he, arra he actually arranged and conducted by Ian Fraser. And it's definitely the award-winning motion picture that's very faithful to the source material. And it did it just right, for sure. And it kind of joins in with another follow-up to uh, Oliver that came out in 1968 uh, that's also based uh, on a novel by Charles Dickens. So it kind of throws in a nod to that, too. And Albert Finney, of course, uh, won his performance uh, for Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, and rightly so. He deserves it, although I would say... He could have deserved an Academy Award for that performance, too. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that it only received four Academy Award nominations, including the best original song, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that everyone has ever done for me. <laughs> yeah. Great song. And that's the song that that just really jumps for joy here <laughs> yeah and it did came out on November 5th of that year and I think it did pretty well when it came out although it's told that it it actually premiered um, only for two screens uh, in Chicago and Los Angeles so it only goes like for its opening weekend it was like yeah, it was thirty-six thousand, and then later they, it they did earn three million uh, for distributional rentals um, in the U.S. So it did got its profit, but maybe it just wasn't. But it almost kind of went a little strong, but not not that strong. But I think the film could have been played anywhere. I'm not so sure, but I I think maybe it was worldwide. But you never know. Um, but it was indeed um, released by Cinema Center Films, uh, the company that gave us um, A Boy Named Charlie Brown and Snoopy Come Home, you know, two you know, Peanuts uh, movie adaptations that we had. Yeah. And which is indeed CBS's uh, theatrical motion picture division. So they put out a lot of um, great movies here and there. You know, before they they became defunct, and then later CBS would would earn their shares um, for through its distribution on television. Yeah, in fact, Viacom was a distributor for all of these films until CBS uh, launched their second uh, theatrical distribution um, or production company to work with uh, studios like Warner Brothers. And embassy and all that and then yeah they sh they also have became the joint picture for TriStar pictures yeah with HBO and Columbia pictures and then they dropped and then of course as decades follow they launched their own uh, film division with Viacom and Paramount since 2007 and then later they joined with Lionsgate to become the theatrical distribution. So they got shut down in 2019. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Such history for CBS to release movies. I mean, they would have a huge library that Paramount would now own. And yes, it's on DVD. And it's been on VHS and Laserdisc for so long. And they had a soundtrack album that was on vinyl. 
but unfortunately um, they never released it on CD that's a shame and then here's something that's really odd they were lucky that when they released this on on DVD as opposed to VHS and Laserdisc for sure uh, they were lucky to have the overture as it was shown through its uh, theatrical release but they removed it on both the Blu-ray release and streaming. Can you believe that? Definitely uh, distasteful for them to do so. Because that's part of the track for this entire soundtrack. Plus it's part of the, the movie. You know, because remember they used to do overtures and you know just before for those who don't miss the film for sure. Sometimes they even use intermission too, like if the movie gets too long, for sure. So people will take a break, you know, to go to the concession stands to grab more, or you know, they can go to the bathroom and all. <laughs> so they get ready for their next um, story. So that's the adventure here. <laughs> okay. We also learned that... Um, Albert Finney was going to choose the part for the role of Scrooge. But then, unfortunately, I guess he had to drop out because he wasn't sure how the script was going to turn out. And I guess because he had something in plan to work on, like he was going to do another movie. But he was very interested at first. And then they were going to get Rex Harrison, and then, and then they were also going to get um, uh, another actor to to take his place and due to scheduling conflicts it just it didn't work out so they got him back again and that's cool because you know this this was the right choice and what's amazing though was that the fact that he's playing the role was that he was giving some prosthetic makeup job to make him look exactly what Scrooge is going to look like in his time you know at as older as he can be, you know, as mean as he can be, but then later he'll have a change of hearts for sure. So he almost looks a little unrecognizable there, you know, with the with his entire hair almost premature bald here. Yeah, you can see the bald spot right there on the side, but he does wear a top hat. You know, it looks like I have a bald spot there too. <laughs> okay. And he does sound a bit like exactly what Alan Young would have sound when he did the voice of Scrooge, as well as you know DuckTales. He sounds more Scottish, in a way. But he definitely fit the part perfectly, so well. You do get to see his younger self too, and you know through the. Um, this past time, so now you'll know. But this is the role that that really shows how much of a excellent actor he was. I mean, this was a marvelous uh, portrayal. And out of every actor out there who plays that role, um, Finney really nails it so well. And it shows. That's what I love about this movie. And I love the songs and everything that went for it. And, and that's why it's so different from many others. I mean, there's even a lot of great um, twisted turns, too. So, here we go. So, there's Albert Finney once again along with Sir Alex Guinness. Yeah, because I know this actor has been in you know, great movies. He's, he's terrific. Like He was in Kind Hearts and Cornettes, The Lavender Hill Mob, as well as um, The Lady Killers, the original. Not to mention, he was the original Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Star Wars trilogy. That's right. Terrific. Um, Edith Evans, Kenneth Moore, Patty Stone, 
David Collins, Francis Kopka, Richard Beaumont, Michael Medwin, Mary Peach, Golden Jackson, Anton Rogers, Lawrence Nysmith, Kay Walsh, Suzanne Nev, Derek Francis, Roy Kinnear, Jeffrey Bailon, Molly Weir, Helena Glogue, Rick Lever, Karen Scargill, Keith Marsh, and Marianne Stone. Yeah, it's written by Leslie Bukusi. That's indeed based on the novel by Charles Dickens. <laughs> and it's directed by Ronald Neem. The movie begins set in London, England in 1860 on Christmas Eve. We meet our surly, mean-spirited miser who's a money lender named Ebenezer Scrooge. He's portrayed by Albert Finney in one of his best performances, who does not share the merry month of Christmas and declines his nephew Harry, who is played by Michael Medred, who is joining with his wife, played by Mary Peach, for a Christmas dinner. But reluctantly gave his loyal employee Bob Cretchett, who is played by David Collins, a day off for the holiday weekend by actually taking his kids, including Tiny Tim, played by Richard Beaumont, to go shopping to get some gifts or any other and to prepare for the holidays, you know, having a nice, delicious uh, Christmas dinner at home, you know, with his wife. Uh, Mrs. Critchett, who's played by Francis Kuka, and has the song Christmas Children. Yeah. As Scrooge leaves his office, he declines two gentlemen offering to collect money for charity and visits some of his clients, including Tom Jenkins, who's played by Anton Rogers, and that's where he sings the song I Hate People. Now, we actually learned that when there was a 1992 stage musical with Anthony Newley playing the part of Scrooge, uh, they actually changed the verse of the song by saying, I hate Christmas, which makes more sense, because it does sound more malevolent and all. Like, he's going to hate boys, girls, children, men, women, you know, or any other... And that's the purpose, because he just despises them so much, the way they're acting and all. Like, if they act so peculiar, or they act insane, or, or any other, or the way they're trying to, you know, to bug him, irritate him, for sure. You just can't stand them. Just when he was about to make his way home, he, that's where he's being accosted and mocked by the street urchins. Yes, a whole bunch of kids going around mock, you know, just going after him for sure while singing the song Father Christmas. Yeah. So now, in his house, he did encounter, indeed, his former partner who uh, passed away several years ago, named Jacob Marley, who's played by Sir Alex Guinness. Yes. He basically spots um, his spirit uh, you know, through the, the door, which definitely shows exactly what Jacob would have looked like, for sure, until he finally appeared. But there was also a, another ghost where you see... Um, we actually see one one spirit um, on the the on the coach, you know, with all the horses running around. So he's just going around having some soup, you know, on a roasted um, open fire at the fireplace, you know, just to warm himself up. And 
Yeah, and then of course, bah humbug. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, of course he always says bah humbug. That's always his line. <laughs> so of course, Marley shows up. He warns him to represent his wicked ways, or he'll condemn in the afterlife as he was. You know, all covered in chains. which forges his own selfishness and greed for sure and that's where he had the song see the phantoms yes this is where he took Scrooge all the way up in the sky flying around and you see a bunch of scary uh, ghouls around oh it was creepy too we had to see that and it didn't it actually went straight into his face now he thought it was a dream but it was not so, of course, he warns them again by actually telling them that he's going to be visited by free spirits. Yes, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas uh, present, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come, or future, if you like to refer to. Yes. So at one o'clock in the morning, Scrooge is visited by a Victorian version of the Ghosts of Christmas Past, and she's played by Edith Evans. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess they knew they wanted to go for that. But it could be any other. <laughs> so he takes them back in time to his childhood days and later his early adult life. They visit his lonely school days too where he was all alone I guess for punishment while all the kids were having fun. He was taken back home by his beloved sister Fan and then by the time he becomes uh, an employee under Mr. Fresrig because he's working together with them for sure. Yeah, You actually do get to see uh, Finney's uh, younger self. That's how he was played when he's not wearing the prosthetic makeup job. So at that point, they had a Christmas party to celebrate. After a job well done, you know, working together here and there, and that's where they sing the song, December 25th, December 25th, yeah. And that's where Scrooge falls in love with Frederick's daughter, Isabel. Beautiful girl, which that's where it brought the song, Happiness. And which is a very uh, wonderful sequence uh, between him and Isabel as they dance around and then then you get to see them together at certain places here and there but then that's where sadness became and more depressed that he ever felt because of greed and selfishness that causes Scrooge to change of how Isabel left him, released him as he chose more about money than her. And yes, he even saw himself and, and told him that he was a fool. He should have just stick with her instead. And that's where he sang the song, You. He didn't dismiss the spirit as he's finding himself back in bed, which is just almost two o'clock as it hits. And that's where he got visited by the ghost of Christmas presents. He was played by Kenneth Moore. Now, yeah, it was a jolly, uh, no, not jolly green giant, but he's a jolly giant for sure. <laughs> yeah, where it has a whole bunch of food around in this entire room yeah the fireplace is lit up too and and a lot of decorations and that's where you see him holding the torch that he has and not to mention he actually gave a Scrooge um, wed wine yes which at this rate it's the milk of human kindness <laughs> You gotta love how joyful he, he looked too when he was drinking that. Like this, this big, um, big glass of uh, red wine. Boy, can I have some more? 
That's what got, got him so drunk, too, at this point. So he teaches him the joys and wonder of Christmas Day, which, at this rate, it's the song, I Like Life. <laughs> yeah. So now um, he visits um, Bob Cratchit's house, learning that his family is surprisingly content with their small dinner, while Scrooge is eventually taking pity on on his ill son, Tiny Tim, because unfortunately, he's not going to live this long. I mean, for sure. And of course, you always know the line, God blesses everyone. So, at least they got a nice delicious dinner. They got the presents and all, or any other that they can afford. But they are pretty poor. And Mrs. Critchett really didn't like the way Scrooge is becoming. But that's what, by giving us Herbert Marks. But nevertheless, they're going to try to find a way. So it, it shows that, yes, Tiny Tim is, or will, or will die. Unless they try to do some changes. So then they went straight to uh, Harry's Christmas party. Yes, that's where they were playing games and all, all of that. And even Scrooge knows that for sure because it's one of those, uh, those funny games. Kind of like musical chairs in a way. You know, where everyone just get around, you know, try to, you know, move around or, or they just go to one person to the next but if someone gets it wrong they lose and they get kicked off and they'll have someone else uh, continue <laughs> um, and yeah there's a lot of snide remarks uh, against him and before um, the ghost of Christmas present uh, banishes uh, Scrooge is being warned that life is too short and he's going to do whatever he can to change that. Which then, by 3 o'clock, that's where things are going to go completely wrong for sure. Although at first, because <laughs> just when he was being visited by the Ghosts of Christmas yet to come, he was played by Patty Stone. Yeah, all wearing that black cloak. But underneath you'll probably be able to see his entire skeleton. So he's like the Grim Reaper for sure. Um, that shows him the Christmas of in 1861 where that's where we meet Tom Jenkins and all the rest of the other citizens around. Which Scrooge doesn't really know was that that's where the song Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest things has everyone ever done for me. <laughs> Now, everyone was all cheering for sure because now um, I guess they're trying to um, dedicate for Scrooge and Marley for the place, only to realize was that Scrooge was dead. So now they're all rejoicing for sure. They just took out the coffin out. Because I, I know eventually that song really gets to him so much too. <laughs> But then the spirit points to Scrooge to Bob's house. And then he sees that the entire family has been moaning. You know, mourning for sure. And then, and then all of a sudden they went straight to the cemetery to discover that Tiny Tim had passed away. And Bob was, was there in his grave. You know, sent out the... Just to send out his regrets and everything that he could to save his young son. And then Scrooge eventually suddenly found his own grave for sure. And then later he fell all the way down into um, the cabins of hell just when he was being 
in total fright by uh, the ghost of uh, Christmas Yet to Come's um, appearance. Now here's an incredible twist right there because this is something you never saw in any version because usually it always ends where he's going to be woken up in his bed and finally getting ready for Christmas for sure for his uh, incredible nightmare well here's this particular nightmare we now found out that he woken up in his own grave but then he ends up in hell where he finally gets to visit Marley one more time Usually he only sees him once, but now he gets to see him again, and now this is where he gets what he what he deserves. And that's where that's where he started to work for Lucifer. Yes. And he's adorned by an enormous chain that's made from his life of past sins. Exactly like how Jacob Marley was, you know, covered in. So yes, he's going to be inside this ice cold uh, room, and Lucifer is going to work for Scrooge as his clerk. Exactly how he's going to be treated. And they brought it in with um, all of um, of these four max demons until finally he woken up in his entire bedroom. And it's Christmas morning. And that's where he finally became totally gleeful and totally mad. But yet, well, in, in a sense. But actually, he's very happy, joyful. He finally changed for sure. And he's going to stay that way forever. I mean, till the day he dies. So now he's decided to bring happiness to the citizens of London. With the song, I Begin Again. And that's where he goes on a shopping spree, you know, to take out all of the toys and all the stuff that they're going to get for the whole entire citizens, families and all. He's going to lend out all the charity for sure. He's going to rip out all of, of the savings that he's going to try to continue. So now they're all going to get what they wanted for sure. Because they really deserve it. You know, they they deserve their pride, for sure. Not to mention, he disguised himself as Father Christmas, which at this rate, Santa Claus. That's something you don't really see in Scrooge. Disguise himself as Santa. <laughs> That's what I love about that. It just shows. Uh, especially when he went to Bob Critchett's house. You know, visit the family, sending out all the toys and gifts, including Tiny Tim. And, and he totally forgives everyone, for sure. He felt bad. He felt sorry. So now he's hoping that he's going to get some doctors to, to recover him for his illness. And yes, God blesses everyone. And so much to his delight, uh, he donates a sizable amount of money to the gentleman that he earlier spawned. And that's where we get to see the repressed version of Thank You Very Much to all of the entire London town. <laughs> yeah. And now he's going to get ready for a Christmas dinner with his nephew, Harry. And he's going to have a wonderful time. Meanwhile, he just hangs uh, <laughs> the hat and the beard on his um, on his door. Yeah, the on his door knocker that has the face. It's kind of creepy when when you see it, but but I think that was supposed to be what Jacob Marley was. Yeah. Just indeed one delightful holiday classic that they ever done 
the songs were as memorable as they could be. Um, the cast is incredible. The way they lend their their the roles, including Albert Finney's marvelous performance as Ebenezer Scrooge. He really nailed that performance for sure. He worked so hard, even with the prosthetic makeup job that he was given, and all the costumes that he had to wear, and and even when he when he was in his younger self and all. I mean, he he's definitely the perfect Scrooge that we ever got. And so on. And I love the twist that they really went for. I, I love how they really did it more differently than all the other versions that we've seen. Like you've never seen before. It just makes it more strong. It makes it more chilling. But it also makes it more joyful. And that's what I love about it. You'll never get anything like this. You never will. And yes, there is a remake uh, that came out on Netflix, an animated remake. Um, it's getting mixed reviews, though, but I don't think it's going to go come this close to match uh, Albert Finney, for sure. Um, especially because they didn't, it doesn't even work in so many ways. Anyway, um, but it does have wonderful cinematography by... Oswald Morris, because he really did a tremendous job, you know, capturing what London looks like for sure, and all these other places that you see, and how it goes from one movement to the other, and how it also takes you in a loophole to certain darker moments and other nice, uh, wonderful shots here and there. That's incredible. And, um, and some nice editing, too. Um, it really speeds up the film through its runtime. Yeah. I just wish they didn't take out the overture on the Blu ray and, um, and the streaming the print. Because I know the, it does look terrific, too, uh, for its remaster. Yeah. And it's nice to see that critics uh, really lended so well. They they gave um, positive feedback when it came out. Some people had mixed feelings. That's okay. Uh, but I'm happy that Cisco Niebert uh, praised this film for sure. And especially praising uh, Finney's masterful performance for sure. Um, including praising the Finney's performance and sometimes they get a little critical on some of the songs though but that's okay at least that's exactly what they did um, and yeah they shot this um, at the Shepperton Studios um, yeah they've done a lot of um, a lot of work over there which at this rate it's now part of uh, Pinewood Studios yeah that's where they did James Bond all the movies. So they, they built all these um, incredible sets, the Victorian streets of any kind. You know, they add some snow and they probably used real snow too because it was probably, they might have shot it during the winter season, but nevertheless, but otherwise it's, it's probably fake snow. But. <laughs> But they really did capture the spirit of, indeed, what what London would look like uh, during that period. Yeah. So yes, um, out of all the versions that you would watch, um, I highly recommend checking the Albert Finney version for sure. Because if you love musicals, I know some people don't, but that's okay. But if you love Albert Finney, a legendary actor as he was and Alex Guinness too which he was terrific in the role of, of Jacob Marley I know I, I've heard that um, he did have trouble having to play that part because of his uh, his back injury that he was going for I mean with the costume that he was given 
having to, to be covered with chains and all. It was affecting him so much, so that's why he had trouble. But still, I mean, he went on to do Star Wars, so he, at least he had the ability to do anything, even with special effects. Because, yeah, the movie had some terrific special effects, showing the ghost and, and all of that. And all these other wonderful shots here. And all this dark, dark humor that they put into it. Even ones that they got away with, for sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, and now, now I'm taking too, too long here. But anyway, if you love him too, and, and the entire Charles Dickens story, you will love this movie for sure. So anyway, I give Scrooge five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and God bless us, everyone. And thank you very much. And have a wonderful and safe Christmas miracle. And, and indeed, a great Christmas Eve and Christmas for this particular weekend. And I'll see you later. Bye.